I know for a fact we're going to be at the top of the game. And I know for a fact that everything that we're talking about right now is going to come true. And I would love to be able to video that and look back and show ourselves someday that we did it and also have the proof and, and documentation that this is how we did it. What's up, everyone? Welcome to a new episode of Real Estate vs. Technology. Big thanks to you for tuning in to a new episode. I can't believe we're over 340, 350 episodes now. Big thank you to Liftoff Agent for sponsoring the show. Be sure to like, subscribe, notification bell, and comment below with any feedback. Today, we're going to actually meet two individuals that are from the Midwest, from a very small town. They're going to tell you where they're from. And they decided to come out to Arizona, Gilbert, Arizona, out of all places. Do you know where that's at? It's about 20 minutes outside of Scottsdale. Go ahead and look at the map. Let's bring a Jacob and Andrew on Real Estate vs. Technology. They're with Midwest Out West. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Do it, bro. So you guys are from the Midwest, and now you're here in Gilbert, Arizona. You live together. Actually, you were used to be on a guest. We had a um, shout-out. Justin Mercer, Call Tattoo, was actually in the hot seat. He was in this studio before. You were on the team. You said, hey, you know, it's cool what they're doing. The vibe was just different, so you wanted to go on your own. So congratulations, first off. Get in the industry, go on your own, and tell us a little bit about, like, man, how did it become to where it's at today? Yeah, it's amazing. So one little story about Jacob and I is some people don't know this, but we've known each other forever. I mean, literally forever. Forever. Ever. <laughs> we, uh, we met for the first time in kindergarten, and so when I'm telling you I've known him forever, I have, and uh, we really got really close our freshman year in high school. Nice. And so, you know, from there, we, we really started to live together in high school. We started to do everything together. Um, then in high school, we found out we wanted to be realtors, and we decided to make that move. So Let's go. Um, we've lived together. We're, we're practically brothers at this point by choice. And, uh, yeah. I love the fact that you guys work together, and you're freaking just on it together. I know, Jacob, you go to the gym. I haven't seen you yet, Andrew, at the gym. <laughs> you, said, you said you go, though, so I know you've seen the car. Yeah, yeah, you know, I do go to the gym, but in, to be honest with you, I broke my ankle, and I'm on day four of not being in a boot. That's right. So I am uh, recovering from a broken ankle, but you better believe that when, when, when my ankle's healed, you'll see me in the gym every morning. Let's go. Hey, I'll be, I'll be there. So y'all work out first thing in the morning. I, I highly recommend it. So let's talk a little bit about. So you're together on the team. So currently, right now, EXP. Keller Williams. Keller Williams. Okay, okay. I thought I saw something for EXP. So Keller Williams office down the street over here off of uh, Higley? Yes, sir. Love it. Okay, okay. So tell us a little bit of like what's the goal? What's the aspiration? I know you guys have, you know, the the brand. I love the brand. So what you guys have done and all the links are down below. So if you want to follow um, follow these guys, you can. So make sure to check them out. But I love the, uh, the concept of the Midwest out west. I think that's a really cool concept. But talk a little bit about being an authority of your community, what's some of the goals behind that brand? Yeah, you know, so we're from Gilbert, Iowa, like we mentioned earlier. And one thing that we realized about the Midwest, and whether you're from the Midwest, if you're listening to this, or you just know somebody from the Midwest, because you do, I know you do, um, <clears throat> you kind of understand that Midwestern people have a trait about them, and that typically is loyalty and kindness. Love it. And so for us, when we sat down and we started our new team, we really had to look at who was our ideal character and who's our ideal client. And so sitting down, we realized that the more open houses that we did, um, the more people that came through, there was a natural conversation flow into, hey, are you from the Midwest? Whether you're from Minnesota, mm. Wisconsin, doesn't matter. And if they are, that was naturally just a trust built that needs to happen to get somebody's information and to get somebody to sell their home. First and foremost, we believe in trust. And so, um, you know, coming from the Midwest, when we connect to people in the Midwest, building the trust was just so much easier than anybody else. So we had to capture people that are moving. I love that. That's a really good concept to be able to go through the process of putting out content and thinking about ways to be able to add value because a thousand individuals in the Midwest don't know anything about Gilbert, Arizona, right? So it's like, all right, what is there to do? What does it look like? What's the price point? How much can I buy for how much I have? And so I love that. And that's actually what my wife and my and myself did. I went on to YouTube and I was searching. Um, and we talked about this before offline. Searching online, found some person who was filming a bunch of content on his phone. 
And I didn't have to fly out. I didn't have to get a rent a car. I didn't have to do anything. I was just basically off work and just went on YouTube. So I love that. And I could I could imagine it being something that could be super fruitful for you guys' brand. Yeah. And it's like what you said to be a mayor of your city. I love that, by the way. And so, like, for us, um, it was kind of being a mayor of our city, but even going to the next step and uh, going into our niche as well. I love that. I love that. So give us uh, give us some context as far as what have you done so far that showed any uh, any outcome, any positive outcome that you can you can talk to. So anyone who's listening and viewing that maybe wants to get on YouTube, film content, be a mayor of their town, what do you suggest for our viewers and listeners? Well, I mean, first and foremost, you got to think, put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And if you've never moved across the country, um, it may be a little more difficult. But for somebody who moved across the country before, yeah. There's certain things that you just don't know, um, and people really love the entertainment side of things, first and foremost, right? What restaurants can I go see? Mm. What hikes can I go do? What is Phoenix even all about? Like, why would I even want to move to Phoenix? So first and foremost, you have to cover those bases. And then if you're talking real estate, because this is a real estate yep. podcast, then you really got to get into um, the real estate side of things. What are my personal favorite neighborhoods in here? For us, that looks like what neighborhoods in Arizona capture a midwest environment so if you want to feel uh, like you're still in the midwest what neighborhoods such as agrotopia and gilbert capture that midwestern environment and then ultimately it's just simply doing that and breaking down hey here's what different price points look like and if you're looking to invest in real estate here's what the future of that looks like and here's um you know here's some certain areas that it might do well for you in the future so. i love that i love that so before we got on air, uh, we had to finish the tour. We haven't done the, the whole house tour. So I was taking them out, showing them around. So we're at a pres this is a personal residence here in Gilbert, Arizona. And we have the studio here. And we went in the backyard. And there's a bunch of trees because of our, our neighbors. He just has this huge back. They had like 300 people and a wedding back there, a 300 person wedding. It was crazy. DJ the whole nine. And my wife says it was until 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. But it was like 11, 1130. They were done. Um, I wish they would have invited us at least. Come on. I'm your neighbor. What's going on? And, uh, and so we like California. So the fact that you just mentioned the fact that you can have areas within the desert, people say, oh, it's so hot. It's the desert. It's all, yes, three and a half, four months. It is pretty hot. But you could still have the Midwest feel like we have a California feel in our, in our backyard. And then we just did a big mural and someone came over and said, do you miss the beach? Like, oh, I don't, I don't so much I miss the beach. It's just nice to have more blues and lighter colors because if I want to go out to the desert, it's not too far from here and you can get both worlds. That's a really smart idea. I never even thought about that. Well, it's true. You know, if you're making a big change from the Midwest, you got to think about what is in the Midwest that people would be missing. And I know because I moved from the Midwest, and what do I miss? Yeah, what do you miss? I miss grass, ah. and I miss basements. Uh -huh. Where do you find basements in Gilbert, Arizona? Agritopia, one of the few neighborhoods that almost, not all, but a lot of those homes have basements. I'm learning something which new. Which, again, is why we push Agritopia so much, because when, you, when you're coming from a home with a basement, you lose a lot of storage, and you know, helping multiple Midwestern families move at this point, that is one thing that is a bit of a hiccup, is where are we going to put all of our shit? And so we try to find basements for that reason. I had no idea there was basements out here. And I heard, what I heard about Arizona is the dirt so hard that they don't even put it in basements. Also, like, we're not getting tornadoes. There's not a lot of, like, reasons why you would need a basement. But it would be so smart. Anyone who's listening, I mean, officials, cities officials, any builders in Arizona, like, it's freaking hot four months out of the year. Having a basement would be a lot cooler. I can imagine. What's your experience with uh, with basements in Arizona, and is it typically cooler? Yeah, yeah. You know, a basement's always going to be cooler. Um, one thing I will say, when, you, when you're in the Midwest, those basements are really, a lot of times, used for just storage. Unless you're in a nice okay. home you know, where it's going to be more of a finished basement. Whereas here, when I see basements, I tend to see like movie theaters. I yes. tend to see stuff like that. Um, but if we're going to be on the conversation of basements in Arizona, do not buy a basement home in Arizona without making sure like the sump pump and all that stuff is working correctly. Ooh. Because you will, in Arizona, when it rains, it pours, and it all comes down from the mountains. Yes. You, you can get yourself into some trouble there because there's not many basements. And so people may not build them here. Interesting, interesting. No, I, I like that. And it's funny that you say that. We don't have a basement, but my wife and I excavated 7,000 pounds of dirt and put in a uh, drain system. I'm going to do air quotes here. Uh, if you're not watching on YouTube, because we'll see what happens with it, but it should work. We'll see. 
Uh, we already had some puddling going on, and it's so true out here. When it rains, it rains, and it rains hard, and it's quick, and it's done. This year, we've had a lot more rain than before, which I thought was kind of interesting, but uh, that's good to know. It's good to know. So I'm curious about team dynamics. If someone's out there watching Rhett now, and they're like, man, like, you know, they're two high school kids, right? boys, girls, whatever, two kids in high school, they're just like thinking about like, man, I'm inspired watching this episode, listening to this episode, roles, responsibilities. How do you guys handle that? Who does what? And how do you have this kind of like, I know a lot of partnerships have like a yin and yang dynamic. What does it look like? I'll let you go. Yeah. Well, I think- go Jacob. No. <laughs> <laughs> Talk so, loud. I think uh, like one of the most important things for us, like specifically and a lot of like mentors um, kind of guided us this way was to have kind of you need to have one person in charge even though we both like come up with ideas one person has to be the final decision maker if you want to make it work yeah so that's kind of drew in this scenario and i'm cool with that like it is what it is yeah this is how it's how we got to run it but <laughs> yeah I mean? yeah so like jacob said you know we have a we have coaches and we have mentors that have you know trained us through this and and you know when when jacob says that i'm the decision maker that yeah you know hearsay right like we're best friends we're brothers and we make the decisions together it's not we don't butt heads very much so i will say that going into it you know be in business with someone you really love um and i love it if, if you don't love them it can get nasty um, <laughs> <laughs> or if you do love them it could get nasty too but uh no and, and another thing too that we did was we took a lot of disc assessments um, ah. at keller williams you take kpas and you really figure out the strengths of your personalities. Like I, um, I am very outgoing. I will, I will bark at you, um, and I will be in your face. And so there's certain roles that go along with that. So if we have a dominant person who talks loud and talks bright, um, then that person takes on a little bit more of a leverage role from that perspective. And then we kind of associate other things too. And so when we're getting into the next couple of years and we're growing the team. We're going to be looking at, okay, who's really good at, who's really good on the phones? Because mm. if that's me, then I'm the one training our salespeople on the phones. Jacob's really good at things too. And so Jacob has a lot of things to train people on as well. And so that's how we break down those roles. I love that. I love that. I think also a big thing too is trust, right? You have to just knowingly trust the person that you're working with and know that they have your best interest because that right there is more of a, I feel like an abundance mindset when you just come from that place of being. Instead of like, oh, this, that, the other thing, whatever, like power struggles sometimes can come up. And it seems like, Andrew, you're more of like an extrovert and Jacob, you're more of an introvert. Yeah. Jacob's a little more quiet, you know, he's a little bit more, you know, chill, laid back. And then Andrew's like, let's go. Come on. Let's, 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 let's get this going. And that is how it is. I mean, to some extent. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it um, not all the time. Uh, and and I, I get introverted too. Ah. Uh, there's many times where I do not like to talk to people and that is very truthful but um, yeah you know it's just it's breaking down the roles and it's just uh, just understanding the strengths of other people and like you said first mm-hmm. and foremost you've got to trust you have got to trust I mean I trust that he's going to have my back all the time Love whether it. it's real estate or not this dude has lit- literally saved me from drowning Wow. before like I, in Lake of the Ozarks 2019 yeah. I should have not. I should not be on this earth if it wasn't for this guy, Lear, like literally. So wow. um, I have all my trust in him. A ra- round of applause for. Come on, Jacob. Th- thank you for saving lives over here, man. Jeez. This guy was a lifeguard, and he did triathlon. And if he didn't do those, I'm telling you right now, I would not be on this earth. So thank you. I love that. I love it. You, you had something, Jay. I, I heard you know. Oh, you- what I was gonna say is, thankfully, I, do, I was doing triathlons at the time. <laughs> or, or he seriously, maybe neither of us would be here right now if I didn't do triathlons at the time. Just want to, just want to fa- fact check here, fact check here. No, I love that, man. I love that. So let's talk a little bit about. So, so now we're thinking. Let's talk about goals, okay? So there's two of you, okay? Any business owner, anyone out there has to think about goals, aspiration, vision board, what have you. So let's talk about kind of how do you guys strategize what the business will look like in the future? I heard some talking about expansion of the team, right? And so you guys are already went off and did your own thing outside of, you know, the call tattoo cha- team, you know, on your own, but you're still with Keller Williams. What does it look like for the team? What does it look like for the business in the future? So funny enough, when we started our team, um, we were not looking to have anybody else on the team for a long time. Uh, we wanted it to just be us, and, and ultimately the goal for starting the team was to have our own company and be 100% commissioned. <clears throat> uh, 
if you don't know in real estate, if you're on somebody else's team, yeah, there's benefits to it, but you're going to be paying out a lot of money once you really start closing deals. Yep. So once you close deals, um, maybe think about making the switch. So when we started, um, like I was saying, we didn't want anybody on. And then we kind of figured out, hey, why are we actually doing this? Jacob and I had to sit down and have that conversation. And we realized that we are doing this um, to get out of the day-to-day -day sales process of the business as quick as possible and ultimately reach financial freedom in this in this life. And so that's through rental properties, but that's also through the real estate team. And that's where leverage, so you use somebody like Liftoff Agent is a great example of leverage. Yeah. Um, but you need to have leverage in, in different systems in your in your business like um, PPC, the pay-per-click ads yep. is a really good way to feed your team. So when we add people on, it's it's doing the PPC, it's having VAs, it's having showing agents, it's being able to do that and leverage yourself out of the business. So for goals, um, I would love to just have a have a team, um, ten to fifteen agents that Let's I go. all know and love and have the same morals with me. And my biggest goal with this team is to have a team where we can take a yearly trip to Hawaii. I want them to bring their husbands and wives, and I want to have a family atmosphere more than love a mega it. team. I love it. What do you see, Jacob? Yeah, well, like adding on to that, I think the big thing with owning a team too is we both got licensed at 18, simultaneously moving across the country to here. So we like, we fully understand the struggle of starting that young and in a whole new part of the country. So wow. I think it's just getting people like who are a little bit younger and really teaching them how to grow in this business and being like in that leadership role too. So, yeah. I love that, man. One thing I always said, I don't, I really don't know if I made it up or not, but if people say that life is a game of chess, and so if if that's the case, then surround yourself with people who've played this game before, mm. and you will not make as many mistakes, and you'll get to where you want to go quicker. And so that's why we've always surrounded ourselves with mentors and coaches. That is the only reason we are at Keller Williams right now. I love Keller Williams, um, but we were at EXP, and there's a lot of advantages to being at EXP. But what they don't have as much is the love and support and training that you find at Keller Williams. And so for us... That shows you how important it is to have good mentors around. And yeah. ultimately, I want to be that person for a lot of people in the future. Yeah, 100%. And I just want to re rewind to the point that you said that it's going to cost. It's going to cost you money as far as being able to be on a team because you already have tech fees and desk fees and you already have to pay all the various different fees within a transaction. Then you're on a team. And then that's another maybe unnecessary amount you have to pay. But, but the thing is, I think anyone who's viewing and listening you know, like I got a sign over here that says, if your circle doesn't inspire, you don't have a circle, you have a cage. So it's okay to pay something that you'll pay in the future for something you'll get up front because you're learning and you're getting mentorship and like you're around people that are already maybe where you want to be. And then as you get closer to where you want to be and you understand the processes and the systems, like you said, then it's like, okay, save that commission. But guess what? Like you said, you're going to have to have leverage anyways. So whether you hire a VA, people in the Philippines, lift off eight, doesn't matter, you know, a, a video company, whatever it is, you're still going to have to shell out somewhere. But then, you know, you have 50 people on your team, you're going to be good. You're not, you're not going to worry about that. And, uh, and the reason why I want to ask you about kind of where you see the team is I love to have guests back on. So then forecasting for the future, I want to say you heard it here first as far as where you're going, where you're headed, what's the goals. And then we can have you back on a year or so and, and see how many people on your team, where you at, what does it look like? You know what I'm saying? So I'm really excited about that. So let's get into some like content creation. What's next? Um, I want them all, anyone liking, like, follow, connect these guys. So the links are going to be down below. What are some thoughts in regards to the future of, is it YouTube? Is it social media? Is it going to be more content you're going to put out there? What kind of content are you thinking about putting out there? Yeah. So a lot of it right now is form content, um, educational content, and like you said, with the growth of Midwest Out West, there's going to be a lot of YouTube-based content, uh, strictly because Google owns it, and so if whatever Google owns, just lean into it. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a lot of YouTube content coming forward, and then uh, we want to make more content that actually shows our real personalities. Sometimes, everybody knows this, so it's repetitive, but social media social media is all bullshit you know what i mean like what you see on there is not necessarily true um, yeah and i feel like for us we've 
we've been authentic, but we haven't shown our actual personalities, the fun side of us, as much as we do, which is why we love these podcasts. Let's go. Um, so you want to talk a little bit more about like the vlogs and, and stuff? Oh yeah, I mean, well, definitely like well with the leverage thing, but not even like leveraging out the time, but it's more like leveraging out to make it as um like high production as possible. Yeah, I think that's like the biggest goal. So yeah, with like vlogs, we want to get to the point where we have someone filming us 100% of the time. I love that. And getting, like, the most raw. Because I feel like that's, like, one thing in real estate that not, like, anyone does is getting, like, the full raw look at what it looks like. Yes. You're running up your own business. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I think Joe Rogan said it, but he said, um, man, what did he say? He said. <laughs> it's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> he said, you know, like, imagine if your life was a movie and you made a documentary about yourself. By the way, Kanye did yes. this. Ah. Kanye West started filming his documentary before he was famous, while he was just making music in the streets. And that's exactly what we want to do. Like, I, I know for a fact we're going to be at the top of the game, and I know for a fact that everything that we're talking about right now is going to come true, and I would love to be able to video that and look back and show ourselves someday that we did it and also have the proof and, and documentation that this is how we did it, and it can do it can be happening. Let's go. I love that. It's funny that you say that because uh... – I actually, two and a half, three years of my life is on YouTube. And uh, nobody, I don't know what the hell is doing. A lot of it is embarrassing because, like, you're like, you're talking and then you're like, what the fuck was I talking about? Like, you're <laughs> hearing yourself. And I have one video that has, like, me reading off my goals. And, like, it's so easy, whoever's out there viewing, listening right now, to, like, project, yeah, I'm going to make two million this year, you know, first year in business. You can, it's possible, especially in real estate with transactions, depending on your price point you just have to be more realistic, right? Sometimes until you can get your footing and you can really understand like your numbers. I love how you guys are talking about numbers and the matrix and how that looks as far as, you know, outputs, outputs equals inputs and how much output you need to put out in order to have those inputs back and then tracking all those matrix as well. So, uh, so I did that two and a half, three years, everything from uh, proposing to my wife, the birth of our daughter, going to events, doing all the things. And uh, it's pretty cool, man. You can't, I, I could say that. I don't know how many people are going to watch it at first, but it's cool to say, like, because you know how people go viral and people think, oh, overnight it's success, right? But then if you have all that content, anyone who's viewing or watching will do it yourself, then, like, when you do go viral, then they can look back and be like, oh, look at all the stuff that they have that they were already doing that we had no idea, but now we know. And they can go back and watch all that content. Yeah. It's a bit, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. How has social media and, you know, like, video creation changed your life? Because I look at you and you're somebody who actually has a platform there's only a handful of people in this industry that actually have a platform um you're one of them and i just want to know how has that changed your life inside real estate and and outside the business too yeah no much appreciated uh my wife so i met my wife on instagram so uh, true story uh she actually uh there's a company she was paying to like make comments and whatnot and so she commented on one of my posts and then i commented back and then i started the dms and then eventually she was because she didn't know it was, it was just a service, right? So then we finally connected and talked and got to a point where we went on a date. She put me in the friend zone and so on and so forth. So so wife was one. Um, also, our co-host of the podcast for the online version, Dan Gandy, was also because of uh, video as well. And after COVID hit, that's when we started the podcast. It gave us an opportunity because uh, I'm going to be dating myself here. Like there was a time where I used to go into brokerages offices. So I would always like, I'd go into your guys' office and go do a presentation. I would meet agents in person in their office and sit down with the laptop and go over all their stuff and go and pull them up on Google and all the things. And then after COVID hit is when we shifted and I closed by my office right before COVID and went digital and went virtual. And then so with the podcast has been great. Anyone listening out there, start a podcast because it could get you into rooms with people that you would never get into otherwise, right? And then you can do like an IG live, which is great. And so we'll do like this podcast. And then when we get close to going live, we can do an IG live when the podcast goes live or out a couple weeks afterwards. So we can drive people back, but then you can cross pollinate organically, right? So it's been, it's been amazing on that sense. And then um, I think not until probably last past year and a half to two years coming out to Arizona has, has things really started to lift off, if you will, um, closing some of our biggest clients. <laughs> biggest clients here, which has been amazing. And then as um, soon as you get like, you know, a GTR and certain things, then, then you get elevated to another level. And it's like, and it's interesting to see how it all kind of comes together, but it's it definitely 10 years in the making, 10,000 plus agents met. It was not overnight, right? And after retiring my wife and doing some other things to get to where we're at today, 
but I really appreciate that because I, I think to myself, and I'm like, hold on, I'm going to pinch myself. Did I just hear that? You know? Yeah. But it's, it's just, yeah. And you got to stay humble and grateful, right? So even when you do have the platform and you start getting larger and having more success, just remembering where you came from. But it's been absolutely amazing. Without video and technology, I could say that I wouldn't be able to be where I'm at today. Um, but still, you know, I don't want to say it's not enough, but there's so much more to do. Yeah, no, that's a great answer. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Of course. Um, and yeah, congrats on all the success that you've had. Like it, you're uh, the epitome of, of what young people look up to when they're trying to grow a business. And, um, you know, in this day and age, the way you grow a business is just so much different. You know, I can't mm. compare to what it was like back then, but... <laughs> I can tell you now, it's it's not easy, especially when you're in a saturated market like Phoenix, and so you got to find a way to stay out and lift off. That's a shameless shameless plug, but it's, <laughs> but it's true. It's really true. I love uh, just the term lift off agent. I love it. Hey, no, one one hundred percent, and I appreciate that as well because we were uh, going back and forth. It used to be uh, personal assistance and personal assistance, like concierge type service, to support RE, support real estate, to then like lift off agent, and uh, it's a cool term key to just use and then like I'm now Mr. Liftoff. I used to be like NLK3 which is normally looking to the third um, but it, it's very interesting it's very interesting and, and and now it's like to be compared to like Agent Image or Luxury Presence and Agent Fire and some of these bigger companies that have a lot of brand equity in the marketplace and it's, it's true it's a lot of saturation you know we're not hot females here okay so it's not as easy for us guys and we're not, not selling sunset <laughs> <laughs> exactly so when you, when you don't have, you know, an attractive, you know, body and the whole line, you can't use that. You got to do something different. And that's where I feel like the community edge is where it's at. If you could have more community and you can cross pollinate with that. And for, you know, you guys and listeners out there that are in real estate, uh, we, I just got off on a podcast earlier today with a guy in Florida and he came up with a community page on Facebook, has 30,000 individuals on this community page. He has a Facebook page and an Instagram page. And imagine it just being like, uh, the Maricopa County page or like the Gilbert page or even Scottsdale, right? And the first thing people do is, oh, I want to visit that place, share, right? And so when it's not your face, but you're the admins behind the brand, it can elevate so much more because then it's not so much about who you are, your sex or how hot you are or anything. It's more just about the community, the area and people sharing that content, right? And then there's so much more to be said with that. So I, that's why I love what you guys are doing and can see that being something where as soon as you get that ball rolling, I mean, people are going to build their like and trust in your sleep. And that's what you, that's why you get online and do video. And then people are going to be like begging to, to work with you guys. I can imagine. Yeah. And that also too, just goes back to having that leverage conversation where it's like, you know, at some point you got to build a business that's bigger than you. You got to build something that can live without your face. Like yes. List off agent. Need, when Norman wants to go to Turks and Caicos for three months Woo! to celebrate with his wife, <laughs> Norman needs to be able to do that without liftoff agents shutting down. Yes. And it's the same thing for real estate business. And if you're just getting started in real estate, it's hard to not let the tail wag the dog, but, you know, just leverage yourself. Yes. Out as much as you can. Yeah. Hey, in true story, uh, it's funny that you said that. It's so true. So the team behind the scenes will keep everything rolling on like a monthly consistent basis for our clients. That's, that's no big deal. Um, and it's a book on my desk and it's called uh, The Conversion Code. Curator is uh, is basically the company. And so what he said in the book, he has a close kind of, he's in the real estate space, close company like ours. And the one thing that I would say that I've learned in business and scaling is it's hard to find someone else as passionate about the business and representing the brand as you will be. And so what he did with his company, he grew it to $2 million on an annual basis before he hired his first salesperson. And so now I'm thinking to myself, do I do that with liftoff? Do I grow to two million and then hire the first salesperson? Now, organically, it happens. Totally, totally fine. But then it's hard. I think the hardest thing when scaling for anyone listening out there and viewing is finding people as passionate about the business as, as you are. Because the thing is, is that these individuals wanna they wanna they wanna do it on their own, which is admirable. The problem is, is they don't understand how much work it takes. Right? When you build a foundation, you have something amazing, and you get to a point where you're like, check it out. Like this is turnkey. What's your goals? What's your aspirations? I could plug you in and then we could freaking go off to the races. And then since the brand, the logo and everything's already been established, it's hard because you're like, you're not coming up with the logo. You're not coming up with the whole business plan, right? You're, you're just kind of, we're fitting you into this piece of the puzzle so we can make the bigger picture. And that's where I think open door policies is huge. Open door policy, let people speak, let people have a vision and, and an opportunity to add to the value 
of the the business model and uh, and the, the the true secret sauce is how do you have them feel that they're part of the company too like it's their business as much as your business yeah well i think that the, that's kind of the tricky part um is and it's the same thing too like you don't even have to be a business owner to feel it you talk about like even just doing content creation it, it can be really hard to let yourself out of the equation for certain things because you feel like you can do a better job than anybody yes. else can do. Yes. And then, and I listened to this from the Bigger Pockets podcast, was it was like, when do you hire VAs? When do you hire all this stuff? Um, and you got to just be able to let go of your own hand in the business and let that grow. So, I mean, first and foremost, you got to get to the point where you can actually do that. And I think yeah. you're well on your way, and so are you. So. Amen, yeah. dude. And that's what it's about, right? Anyone viewing and listening, I hope you understand that like you're that much closer to success and not even maybe knowing it because, you know, good company, right? And people, are, we're, we're vibing out together. We have aspirations and goals and places that we want to go. So we're inspiring each other, which hopefully inspiring you to start something, to do something, to push harder and to have more success, right? And and not just, you know, because, you know, unfortunately, misery likes company, right? And, you know, you got to get away from people that don't push you, don't challenge you, don't support you. And that's why I wanted to vibe out with you guys. We met for the liftoff agent side. And then I said, hey, let's get on the podcast. So you guys come in, talk about where you're at, and then let this be encapsulated because this could potentially be your guys' like opportunity to now start filming behind the scenes and be like, all right, that one podcast we said that we're going to start documenting if you haven't already done so. And then you just continue that documentation. We'll get you back on a year and who knows what could freaking happen, dude. Yeah. I'm just putting it out. There. I'm manifesting for you, bro. I don't know. I don't know how accurate that is. But... <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Have you ever read the book Vivid Vision by Cameron Harold? I have not, but I'm going to have to check it out. Check Vivid it out. Vis- Vision, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that we... Um... We did a long time ago, and I could go back and pull it up and read it, but it was actually when we were not even licensed yet. We were 17 or 18, and uh, we wrote out what the next five years would look like, and it would be a news article in the perspective talking about us five years from now. Where would we be? And it was owning our own team. It was doing social media, um, and it was it was laying out those goals, and so going back to where you were and how do we let people come into the business and grow? And, and you're right. Like, there was a time where no one cared about Apple more than Steve Jobs. Yes. And that was probably a very long period of time. And that's the same same way for any company. But when you're able to really lay out your vision, you lay out your morals and what matters to you, I feel like it's a lot easier to get people on board. And Jacob does a good job at, um, you know, being there and, and making me feel like we're on the right path, too. And then Love so... It. Um, you know, having him on my side is just incredible. I love that. I love that. So I, we're getting closer here to the uh, end of the show, and uh, I and you already just gave like a good golden nugget. But I love to be able to leave the viewers and listeners with something they could take, something that they can apply, they could take to their business, and something that they could just like say, "Man, like that was a good like like bookends to the to the episode." So in closing, someone's out there, they want to start their business, they're they're getting ready, they're still in grade school, they got they got a best friend, right? And they, they want to go down the same same path. You know, of course, go back to the episode. There's lots of gold nuggets. I love what you just said for forecasting for the five years. But um but different perspective, both of you guys. Let's start with Jacob. What do you want to leave for them as we close out the show today? I think the biggest thing for me is, I know a lot of people say it, but just take the risk. I mean, moving here from Iowa at 18 years old was a massive risk. Starting our own team at 21 years old was a massive risk. Um, doing, building the team with like your best friend, some people would say that's a massive risk, but I can't like imagine where, where we'd be at if we didn't take that risk. So Let's that'd go. be my biggest thing. What do you got, Andrew? I have two. Um, one is for real estate people, and one is just for younger people in life. But we'll start with the real estate one first. Um, the real estate one is for the first two to three years of your business, and this is not something that I was told. I had to figure this out. Because <laughs> I came in with the perspective that I was going to come in, make 100000 bucks, and be chilling at 18 years old, and that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the first two to three years of this business, um, you might feel like nothing's ever happening. Mm. Like, you might feel like you're driving on ice, is what I like to say. 
And yes, you're having great conversations. Yes, you're holding open houses open, but nothing is transacting. Why? You got to realize that the, the conversations that you are having now are building you for a year and a half from then. And so right now, when we're able to look at our book of business for 2024 and 2025, this is the first time that we've been able to sit down and be like, hell yeah, we got, go. we got stuff coming. Like we'd have stuff coming. Why? Because of the consistent open houses, because of the consistent conversations. If you would have asked me a year and a half ago, how's real estate? I was that I've made $52 in the last oh, six shit. months. Not the case anymore. So stay in the business and uh, let that pendulum hit you because it already swung the other way. It's coming back. Mm. Um, and then for life, I said this on another podcast, but I just love it so much. I'm going to say it again. Life comes in seasons. And season one is so much different than season two. And the older you get, the more you figure this out. And you might have something to chime in on this too. Um, but when every season is going to have some downfalls for sure like you are going to contemplate whether or not you made the right move moving to Arizona we've contemplated that before even though we're very advantageous about it there's still many times that we've sat back and said damn did we make the right move should we move back to Iowa should we move to Florida mm. was an option at one point and we didn't um, and so just stay in your lane Life comes in seasons, and season two is better than season one. Season three is better than season two, and just keep growing. Wow. Boom. Applause on that one. Let's go. No, th that, was, that was great, man. And the only thing I would add on to it is, like, don't forget your wins, and stay humble, and always practice gratitude. Because literally this week, I was, like, getting down and out of myself, and I was upset, and I'm just, like, not where I want to be, and I wanted this month to be larger than it is, even though we're up by 30% from this time last month. And then, yeah, Shay got a message from my business partner, and he said, Norm, like, we just had, like, one of the biggest months of our history and just, like, closed Congrats. eight grand additional reoccurring revenue. We just signed up our biggest, two of our biggest clients. Another one just upgraded. So I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Like, let me slow down a little bit and just be grateful because sometimes I feel like as entrepreneurs, we, um, we get very anxious anxious and we just want more want more want more now 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 but if you don't have the time it takes to get there and take that time it's just like winning the lottery the faster you get it the faster it's going to go so you have to like build up like those muscles you're not going to have big muscles overnight because if you did taking steroids you're going to have a whole lot of other issues so there's i think there's a reason why you're supposed to just take it step by step how do you practice gratitude every morning first thing before i get out of bed yep. every morning it could be something as simple as the fan because it's hot that day or something as simple as an electric toothbrush or something as simple as freaking a toilet I can flush and I get controlled temperature room. You know what I'm saying? Like little things like that, I automatically go into practicing and then from there, I'll get up and for the first 20 minutes of my morning, before, like I love getting up before my daughter, before my wife, before anyone. About 4, 4.30, sometimes 5, depending on the night, go to, the time I go to sleep before and then I'll just get up, practice that gratitude. As soon as I know what the gratitude, then I go downstairs and I start my routine and go through my thing. And then I have a red light therapy machine in the gym. And when I do the red light therapy, I like to go over like, what are the goals? What are the things that I want? Plus I have the vision board and things written down inside the closet there. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing because it talks about um, anxiety and a lot of things, anxiety, cortisol. There's a lot of stuff. If you look up, um, you know, the different effects that just practicing gratitude does, it helps you really ground out. Just like, you have a negative and a positive terminal like you i feel like for some reason it's interesting the gratitude is the ground to you and the positive is like all the things that you want to keep bringing in but the the negative is like the grounding to like be grounded to where you're at and be happy and grateful for what you have and that's why i feel like bringing people around that maybe has aspirations to where you want to go helps you also ground more because then you can then you can relive the appreciation of what you have through someone else's lens wow Wow! Hey, hit the applause button for yourself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was very well said. I'll say. Um, but yeah, gratitude is just so it's just so so important. Um, and life is about perspective. Amen. Grateful is a good perspective to have. Go follow both these gentlemen. Links are down below. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thank you both for being on today. I appreciate your time. And thank you guys for viewing, listening, and tuning into the podcast. And uh, please, like, subscribe, notification bell. And thanks for Liftoff Agent for sponsoring the show. So we'll see you all on the next one.